神くんがキラおヤガミくんおうもうすべてのピースは揃っているここまでくれば私も日本かおーぼへいがおへいがお私は一人で飛行機に乗る手続きとしたことがあります<笑>一度戻ってもらい一緒に日本<笑> hey, hold this, bro. Whoa. プロも NHL も飛びついてきましたね。私はキラを捕まえるべく、今日本にいます。日本になぜわざわざそれを言う必要がある ?F、SPK のメンバーは、指揮を取る私を入れて、たったのよ。This is quite a calculated phone call, isn't it? そこを、帰り討ちにしてみせます。Oh boy, it's getting there now. Ooh, oh, so no chose. Look at there. Not a bitch. The fact that he's actually stepping out in the field. Something big is at play now for near. So no toki, my Yoroshko Negai Shimas. Hi, he's making his big move. Kira to Ketchako. Can't get me to Hano Tokiko. Korea El to eat the each no tata. ただエルがエルの息の That's easy enough to figure out, right? Ex Kirawa, Takadao Kaishi, Ishino Sotsu Hakatinas, Maz Hitotsmeva El Kira, Ex Kira Koroste Shimai, Noto Boshus, Kono Yarikatawa Zetaini Arimasen. Nazata. But I touch no Yarikata deva Naikara. Hm. Hito Koroste Oite, Sabaki at Tomatakara. Do you Jingo Shodak Tekina Yarikatawa? But I see a Edu no Yarikata deva Nai. Edu no Kabaremasen. エルが次のものに託した意味がないファンレターといえど多少は目を通すべきだと思うよそうねここからのメモは気を落ち着け同様がこの会話を聞いているものに伝わらぬよう読んでくれゴワンゴワンゴワンリーデッツゲティーには別の仕事ができた完全なキラ世界を作るためにキラとしての裁きを君にしてもらいたい。ああ、大丈夫だよ。わ<笑>かったわ。やるわ。やった。さすがライトくん。うまいっすね。Yeah, he's good, all right. <laughs> he's quite the manipulator, right? Sakujo. あなたからとわかるようにした私宛てのファンレター送ってください。中身は白紙のノート5枚私が受け取るまでは今まで通りの裁きをしてくれたお前が受け取った後あなたは本物を使わず偽物のノートを使って裁きを偽物極限まで似せた偽物を作りああ偽物で裁きのふりをする今日の高田様は厳重な審査を通った4名の女性ボディーガードを紹介します<笑>第二十二回空手道選手権優勝大山達美。大山達美。元 CIA 捜査官。アルリドナ。この中に SPK メンバーがいるなら。There is アルリドナ。Yeah。ニエも高田から探ろうというは。義務教育の段階で。キラの存在。キラの。Mandatory education。Wow。Okay。It's going there。教えていくこと。X キラは。高田がキラ崇拝者だと知っていたもの。高田の身近、親密な関係にあったもの。キラはどんな小さな犯罪も許しません。今後裁かれる対象は、今生きるすべての人間とし。わお。はっ。ぜひまたキラの声を、考えを聞きたいと思っています。キラの教え、指示通りにしていくことが。Oh, has he fit? Yeah. 
Light Yagami noticed him, so Nier is also noticing him. Oh wow, he's really just putting it all together here. It does, yeah. Mellow? Oh, never mind. Pfft, those boots threw me off. Oh, a rival. <laughs> wow. Ah, he's about to find out that something happened and they had to remove. Oh, okay. ジェヴァン。リドナ、どこか失礼のない個室を。それとあなたもどう席してください。ああ、ボーイ。はい。忙しそうだけど、ちゃんと会えてます?個室。自分は会っててミサは会えてないの分かってて。なんてやつ。会
Um, uh, a few interesting things came out of it, uh, for sure. For sure. I mean, let's focus on the ending there. Now, you know, it, it's so clear that he's doing this. You know, this is all by design, him being this open about it. He, you know, Giovanni, uh, and I love saying that name, <laughs> Giovanni, who kind of kind of looks like Ray Pember, doesn't he? Also kind of looks like Light, almost. I don't know. Uh, really similar character designs. But, you know, uh, Giovanni, uh, he mentioned that it's actually really quite easy to, you know, track him down or to shadow him. Right, because that's that's the whole point of this. Mikami is trying to get shadowed, is trying to get followed. Uh, he wants them to see this, right? It, it's all part of the plan. And you see that on the train. Um, you know, he openly <laughs> pulls out the book, right? A book, uh, and you know he sees something going down. You know, there's a bit of a scumbag on on the train, and for that reason, Mikami makes it clear that he's about to write his name down in the book. And of course, the guy drops dead. And Giovanni, the representative for the SPK, sees this. And, you know, of course, uh, in addition to him, or like in extension to him, uh, the other SPK members and Nier, right? But of course, the interesting aspect of this is the fact that, you know, this might be the fake book, uh, as they set up earlier in the episode, right? This might be the replica uh, death note that he was asked to make. Um, uh, and, you know, from the, and, and from the looks of it, it kind of looks like, you know, he took the picture, and of course, since he has the Shinigami eyes, he knew the name uh, like instantly, right? So he took the picture, probably texted the name as well. So, you know, uh, Kiyomi uh, ta uh, Takara got the, the photo and the name and she wrote down the name on one of the pages. Boom, right then and there, the guy drops dead. But from Giovanni's perspective and also an extension to Giovanni, uh, the SPK and Nier, I'll get, I'll get to Nier in a bit. It looks like, yes, you know, it happened right in front of them. It's then and there. He put a name down. Boom. He drops dead. So X Kira is right there on display in the field. Um, now, again, you know, the whole notion of it being so clear, you know, it, it's so deliberate, uh, so in the open. Uh, my question then becomes, is Nier going to buy this, right? Is he going to buy this? Um, everything just falling so perfectly into place. Now, earlier in the episode, Nier did mention that their focus is on Mikami. Uh, and again, the focus is on Mikami because he figured out that Mikami is X Kira, right? There's L Kira and there's X Kira. Um, now I'll get to the deduction scene in a bit. Um, uh, you know, now, like I mentioned, uh, this, this series needs, I mean, this anime needed much more than five episodes and it's even more clear here in this episode. I believe I said that in the discussion for the last episode, right? That this needs more than five episodes. It became even more clear here. But, you know, circling back to Mikami and the replica death note, uh, yeah, you know, so far so good. Uh, again, uh, maybe next episode I'll find out that Nier's not down for it. And, you know, again, I'm unsure. I'm not sure if Nier's going to buy this just yet. Um, the really deliberate and really obvious nature of it all, right? Uh, right in the open. Uh, as they're following him, he just happens to do exactly the thing they need him to do to prove that, yes, he is Kira at the moment. Though, uh, ex Kira, right? There's no element of just one Kira anymore. You know, in this episode, it was confirmed that Nier knows there is another Kira, right? Um, X Kira, L Kira. You know, it, it kind of goes back to that running theme of uh, Light Yagami keeping the Death Note or the killings of the Death Note on the move so it doesn't come back to him. So he can appear to be innocent, you know, uh, because again, he is under suspicion through uh, members of the task force and, you know, SBK. He knows Nier highly suspects him to be... Uh, Kira, in fact, you know, Nier knows he's Kira, but again, Nier wants to use the right method to take him down. Uh, in that sense, you know, the legacy of L is uh, a talking point in this episode, you know, be it through Light Yagami or be it through uh, Nier. And, you know, through Light Yagami, it's more so of him once again realizing that, you know, the, the battle continues, right? It's an ongoing battle with uh, L, right? The whole, you know, concept of uh, being ensnared by his chains. Uh, long after his actual physical death, he's still facing L. And, you know, this is the second time he's realizing this, okay? Yeah, yeah, you know, pff, um, I am still facing L, you know, even if it is through um, others. But, you know, these others take a lot of inspiration from L, right? They are really similar to L. Uh, of course, N is really quite similar to L in that sense, isn't he? And then if you shift to N and his, you know, method, right, there is that talking point, you know, let's get our uh, ducks in order. And he's going through the potential roads or path they can take uh, towards uh, taking Kara down, you know. First path, um, not as elegant, you know, uh, he mentioned, yeah, maybe they could just, you know, 
uh, kill them and take the death zone. But then he, you know, immediately mentioned, no, that is not the path that the SPK or I am going to take, right? Uh, he's thinking of El's legacy, right? He wants this uh, capture, uh, this case, uh, to be in the spirit of El, and he wants to uphold that. Uh, you see earlier in the series, um, I, I believe at one point he called L a loser for getting caught, right? Again, you know, there's more more than meets the eye. There, that's like a surface level comment, I think. Um, ultimately, he does respect L, or he did respect L and his method uh, and his reputation and, and, you know, how he did things, right? So he wants to uphold the legacy of L as well. But yeah, in the last episode, I brought up the idea or the notion of maybe even Mikami being used as the fall guy yeah, it looks like maybe it is going into that direction, right? Or at least he's being used as bait, right? And he's totally open to it. You know, for a split second, he kind of questioned uh, God's motives, but then he immediately snapped out of it, right? Um, or he, he didn't really question it, he was kind of confused about it. But then he immediately realized, no, you know, I shouldn't be asking questions of God, you know? Of course, there's got to be a reason for this, so I'm just going to follow the path he's laying. So yeah, you know, at the moment, the heat is on uh, Mikami. He's uh, out there as bait, but also, you know, Nier and is also laying some bait he was laying some bait for Light Yagami, right? For Kira. Uh, you know, he's completely open about uh, being in Japan. Let Takara Kiyomi know that there's only four SPK members, right? So yeah, you know, he's also laying his bait. Uh, and of course, you know, the fact that he is finally stepping into the field, uh, and that's quite a rare thing, but the fact that he's doing it means that, yeah, this is really getting to the end game now, right? It's really, I mean, <laughs> There's only, what, well, four episodes left, so yeah, it is getting to the endgame, but yeah, him stepping in really reiterates that, right? Okay, it's getting there now. But yeah, you know, this whole uh, replica death note and Mikami being the target, the bait, um, using a fake death note, essentially, right? So far, so good for Light Yagami, this plan of his, but you know, it was just introduced, like, really late on in this episode, so let's see how that plays out. I can also see it being a problem, right? It's yet another thing that's kind of introduced into the story, late in the story, um that could end up biting him in the ass. Um, that could come back to, you know, haunt him uh, if, you know, it was to, if it was to be revealed that it's a fake, right? It all kind of depends on um, how it plays out for Mikami in these, in these next few episodes, right? Uh, and the things he does. Um, so let's see, you know, the, it does introduce yet another angle to it, right? So yeah, at the moment, you've got Giovanni uh, shadowing uh, Mikami. So let's see how that continues. And, you know, I just kind of uh, noticed, you know, Mikami, Kami as in God, right? But Mikami, uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm sure there's a further uh, explanation for that name choice uh, in Japanese, right? Mikami. Um, but yeah, let's see how that plays out. Giovanni's on the scene. He's out in the field. Um, and at the moment, the SPK is focusing on Mikami. Now let's circle back to Nier, right? So let's go through the things he knows. Uh, essentially, he did it himself in the episode, right? Uh, he's kind of laying out all the, the things uh, in front of him, essentially. So he knows, um, he, he essentially knows that La Yagami is Kira. He assigns him the name of El Kira, right? But then he also knows that the, the killings are still going on. And based on some of the methods and the manner of killing, he deduced that the second Kira, um, uh, ex Kira, is also uh, in possession of the Shinigami eyes, right? And he's the one who has a death note and doing, you know, writing down the names. And of course, the connection here being uh, a follower, uh, a devout follower of uh, Kira, who happens to be uh, Takara Kiyomi, right? So he figured all of that out. He knows that much, um, that they are communicating through her, the lovely Takara Kiyomi, right? But, you know, the whole idea of a second Kira who has Shinigami eyes, uh, that's existed in the story before this, right? Uh, through Misa. So you know, it happening again is not a shocker to, you know, Melo or to Nier, right? They know this information. They know about this, that there there used to be a second Kira as well. And now, another, you know, a second Kira has surfaced, resurfaced, essentially. Um, but now, essentially, there's yet another Kira, right? Uh, Takara Kiyomi, who has a few pages, um, and she's actually writing down the names instead of um, Mikami. I mean, Mikami is writing down the names, you know, he's, he's going through the whole motion of it, but of course, uh, nothing's happening, right? Because it's the fake. But, you know, realistically speaking, someone probably should or probably is going to at some point realize, okay, you know, it's possible that Takara uh, Kiyomi has a larger role, you know, um, especially now that they know she's intimate. Uh, someone that has an intimate relationship with like Yagami. I mean, Nier knows this, right? So surely, you know, he's going to deduce that, yeah, okay, so maybe she's also been given the responsibility um, at some point, maybe, right? If they kind of run into a bit of a dead end, you know, I think that is an angle that Nier could figure out, right? 
I mean, it's highly suspicious already, right? Um, like Yagami and uh, Kiyomi, right? And the whole wiretap situation. In fact, he even called up Aizawa um, to ask him, you know, about the wiretaps, if they have footage, you no. Know? You know, he confirmed, no, it's just, it's no more footage, just wiretaps. So, of course, you know, Nanir knows about that as well. And you see Aizawa, maybe he did show some sign of suspicion there. And I was hoping for that because in the last episode, you know, I kind of spoke of how it, ah, once again, uh, the task force kind of just allowed it. But yeah, you know, there was a hint of suspicion there. So hopefully he kind of, you know, goes down that path again of being highly suspicious of this, right? Situation that, oh, okay, they're in there. There's no footage. Um... But yet, you know, they they keep they keep meeting, um, they keep having these meetings. Um, surely, someone's going to realize that. Okay, you can communicate in other. There's other ways to communicate, right? <laughs> you can do so many things to communicate, right? Yes, they're using uh, the notepads uh, and you know little uh, notes, but there's so many other things you could do, right? Hand signals, your eyes play a part, and of course, like I mentioned, near knows about. Uh, this intimate relationship that uh, Takada Kiyomi has with uh, Lai Yagami, and he also knows about uh, Misa, right? He was told about uh, the things that played out at that dinner, right? And of course, you know, uh, Kiyomi wanted one of the SPK members to be there, right? She she requested that she be there. And you see that she does report back to SPK and N, and N realizes, okay, yeah, you know, these, these ladies are... Uh, being manipulated, right? They are not going to um, give up on Lai Yagami, right? They're not going to, you know, give him up, essentially. Um, they are subservient, essentially. Though, you know, Kiyomi isn't as subservient as Misa, right? Misa was just like, oh, do anything you want. You know, I'm your slave. You know, she almost had that kind of mentality. But yeah, uh, he sees that side of Lai Yagami now. He knows, you know, he's a master manipulator. Um, and he's got these uh, ladies just on... Uh, you know, on strings, essentially. And, you know, in that sense, that dinner scene, um, you know, some of their anger is so displaced, isn't it? You know, some of their anger towards each other. And I'm speaking of Kiyomi and Misa, you know, th that competitive nature. Um, though, of course, it served another purpose as well for Kiyomi. Uh, but, you know, again, like I mentioned, you know, Light's a master manipulator. He doesn't really care about any of them, right? Just like he discarded Misa, he's going to discard Kiyomi, right? He gave her the same promise he gave to Misa, you know, you'll be the goddess of the new world. Um, yeah, you know, he'll discard her. So, yeah, you know, this competitive nature and this, you know, anger towards each other because of, you know, uh, Light Yagami, it's kind of misplaced, right? But also there's another angle to this, you know, she's kind of doing her own research, right? Her own investigation. Uh, and I'm speaking of Kiyomi, right? Uh, she, you know, she's a smart individual. And I mean, that was clear to see here, you know, um, the distinction here, Misa and Kiyomi. Kiyomi is uh, younger than Misa, yet she is so much more mature, level-headed, intelligent, right? Uh, just like, just the type of person uh, Lai Yagami could use and utilize. And like I mentioned, you know, he is... Um, surrounding himself with people that can really assist him, right? And she's one of them, right? She kind of fits the model. Um, so yeah, you know, she's kind of doing her own thing. It'll be interesting to see if she tells Lai Yagami about this and how he handles this. But another thing that came out for Kiyomi uh, through this dinner scene, this dinner uh, moment, is that she was able to confirm that Misa does not know that Lai Yagami is Kira. And you see that upon getting that confirmation, she kind of had like a physical, you know, reaction to it because she instantly realized that, oh, okay, so this is the real deal, you know? Light Yagami does intend to have me by his side, uh, have me be this, you know, partner, this goddess of the new world, right? Um, and, you know, that smile. But yeah, you know, by the end of that scene, each one of them thinks they've come out on top, uh, essentially, right, that they won, uh, you know? But again, like I mentioned, it's kind of misplaced, the anger towards each other, you know? Uh, because Light Yagami does not care. He simply does not care. He's manipulating uh, Kiyomi Takada as well. But yeah, let's go back to Nier's deduction scene. Okay, that's a big moment. That's a big moment. Now, you know, right up front, uh, it, to me, it's like, yeah, I see how he got there. I see how he got there. I think some of the visual storytelling and visual cues make it clear that, you know, that didn't happen immediately, right? Him coming upon uh, his prime suspect, Mikami. You can see. I thought there was a great visual sequence there that kind of depicts the passage of time. So, I mean, that's how I saw it. You know, to me, it looked like, yeah, okay, it was an instant. But, you know, it does happen really quick, uh, on screen at least. Now, again, I think this is a limitation here of uh, the episode count. Now, you'll have to let me know, you know, the reasoning behind this. You know, how come they're cutting corners from the looks of it? 
Um, yeah, here it was really clear to see that, you know, they didn't give me everything that the manga might have shown. Uh, and, you know, I, I have been, you know, told before that, you know, they take some liberties in the second half of, uh, of the adaptation. Uh, they, you know, they cut a lot, apparently. So here it was really clear that they took a shortcut. And I don't think that was the right thing to do here. I personally, you know, I personally kind of saw that, okay, yeah, clearly it didn't happen immediately. Um, but, you know, I could see how many would think it just happened immediately and he just happened to guess the right guy, right? Right person, Mikami. So yeah, you'll have to let me know, uh, you know, why the studio felt the need to cut corners. Uh, did they have, did they not have a choice maybe? Uh, did they only have a limited amount of episodes that they, they were given, uh, right? That, that could be a possibility maybe. Um, they somehow had to fit the rest of the story into a limited amount of episodes they had left. Um, yeah, it could be a bunch of things. You'll have to let me know how come they keep uh, doing this. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I could already tell this this needs more than five episodes, but after that moment, like, I'm definitely going to read the manga at some point, um, for sure. I feel like I'm missing out on a lot of details here, uh, though I still feel like it, it kind of got the job done in that scene. So from the looks of it, it looks like he watched a lot of footage uh, of Kiyomi Takada, right? She became a person of interest to him, uh, someone who has an intimate relationship with like Yagami, right? So he watched a lot of footage of uh, uh, Kiyomi, right? And because of that, he happened to come across uh, Mikami, right? And of course, Mikami stands out quite a bit, right? And of course, in the last episode, they showed us Mikami having that debate, um, or he was on that talk show and, uh, you know, Kiyomi was the host. So yeah, you know, I see how he got there, just like, like Yagami got there, right? He was doing the same thing, right? Mikami stood out to him uh, and, he, you know, he had a lot of the qualities that Lai Yagami was looking for. And, you know, Lai Yagami is a genius, so is Nier. So in that aspect, they kind of came to the same conclusions, right? And of course, in the last episode, Mikami mentioned that, you know, the moment he brought up uh, Kira, uh, Takara's, uh, de you know, demeanor completely changed, right? Uh, that she had a really rigid take on um, uh, society, essentially. Um, and she is a follower of Kira, you know, a, a devoted follower of Kira. Uh, so yeah, I feel like Nier kind of picked up on all the same things. Uh, and yeah, you know, Mikami certainly fits into that model, right? That um, piece of the puzzle, you know, he is so devoted to Kira and the path Kira has laid for them, uh, for the people, right? For peace. You know, Mikami is talking about how, you know, the followers of Kira, uh, the fanatics essentially, but, you know, the followers of Kira, they don't always need direction from Kira, right? Uh, and he brought up the possibility that, you know, sometimes maybe Kira is not able to uh, give us instructions. He's not able to, you know, make an appearance, uh, be it through his actions, uh, through his teachings. But then, you know, as followers of Kira, um, it's our duty. It's our, you know, uh, it's up to us to take the initiative to keep on that path, you know, without getting instructions. Um, and, you know, just follow the teachings of Kira. Uh, so interesting angle there, you know, if say in the end game of this, Lai Yagami ends up being caught or if Lai Yagami ends up dying, you see that his teachings and his followers uh, might remain, right? Uh, in some sense. But of course, you know, if, if there's no death note uh, being used, uh, then again, you know, following that path becomes really, really uh, challenging, doesn't it? But yeah, you know, I thought it was an interesting aspect of this. And of course, Kiyomi put out a few more things, um, you know, that pretty much everyone is a potential target for Kira, right? Everyone. Uh, and that the teachings of Kira are going to become part of the school uh, teachings, essentially, right? A, a normal part of school for children. So there you go, you know, more of that slippery slope. And that's perfectly in line with some of the things uh, Mikami is saying, right? And the things he believes in uh, about Kira, about God. And speaking of Nier, I loved some of the imagery. You know, there's that one great shot of Godzilla and Nier standing uh, above Godzilla, above like these buildings, you know, play set of buildings, essentially, you know, a titan uh, looming above. Um, you know, a titan has entered Japan, essentially. You know, I love that perspective shot, you know, even even taller than Godzilla. But yeah, I really love the juxtaposition of, you know, Nier being so childish in certain uh, aspects, but then being such a genius in other aspects. You know, in one aspect, he, he feels like, uh, uh, you know, this master detective, uh, someone people look up to yet, you know, another aspect, uh, in another aspect, he's this child who needs people to accompany him on a plane ride. And, <laughs> you know, I love those little scenes. There's that one scene, he's handing off his, uh, you know, his action figure and he's like, here, hold this, give me that one. <laughs> You know, I love it. I just love that aspect of it. You know, he's so childish yet. He's so impressive at the same time. 
Um, you know, I love how he had the Lego pieces and he's, you know, titled each one or marked each one, right? And he's got them on a chessboard. It's really cool. I, I really like that aspect of it. But yeah, you know, it's exciting that he is now kind of really in there. He's in Japan. It's getting there now, right? I'm start- It really feels like, yeah, I'm about to hit the conclusion really soon. Uh, all, all the pieces are there. You know, Melo didn't show up. You know, I saw a glimpse of him in the last episode uh, showing back up in Japan from the looks of it. Um, but yeah, no Melo in this episode. But, you know, again, four episodes to go. Let's see Melo's next move. Uh, again, you know, he's a bit more... Uh, hyperactive, a bit more of a maverick. So, you know, I'm sure his next move is going to be bombastic uh, as usual. Um, So let's see, you know, let's see how that plays out. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I think think I've covered it all. Um, You know, Misa, again, you know, she, (laughs) in this episode, she was really presented as a really just, you know, almost like a side character for comedic effect. But yeah, like I mentioned, I'm certainly going to check out the manga uh, at some point. you know, this, I think this part of the, uh, the manga, or sorry, the anime certainly needs a lot of the detail. Yet, you know, it, to me, even as an anime only, it's clear that they are cutting corners, uh, especially in this episode as well. Uh, you know, it's clear that they're focusing on some things quite a bit. But then other elements that seem like they're just as important get, are, you know, kind of being cut short, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it's I don't think it's the right approach. Clearly not the right approach to be cutting corners. Uh, near the conclusion of an anime, of a story. Um, Again, you'll have to let me know the reasoning behind this. I think you could have condensed that dinner scene and get the same message out of it, some of the same information out of it, and then, you know, allocate some of that to um, Nier's deduction scene, right? Um, I think that would have been a better balance of this uh, instead of focusing so heavily on that dinner scene, right? There's a lot of dead space in that dinner scene as well, right? Yes, some information came out of it, Uh, But still, I think they could have chopped that up a bit. You know, they could have cleaned that up a bit, uh, condensed it essentially, um, and give a scene like uh, Nier's deduction scene a bit more um, prominence, essentially. You know, in the end, like I mentioned, I got got the message. Uh, If you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. Uh, If you're interested in full length for this episode right now, consider checking out the Patreon page. The link is in the description, in the pinned comment. And those also have the link to my Twitter page, uh, Twitter account. Uh, Consider checking out the Twitter page. Consider following the Twitter page and support the channel. So thank you for joining me and thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again soon for the next one. So until then, take it easy. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.